Case at 12. The news at 530 starts right now. Tonight, several cars are destroyed after an auto repair shop caught fire this afternoon over on the southeast side. Fire officials say the damage is extensive. Jonathan Cotto live at the scene for us this evening. Jonathan, tell us what happened out there. Tim, thankfully, no injuries were reported here at the fire at Temple Hill Automotive off of Goliad Road, not far down from I-37. Fire officials tell me they could see smoke coming out of the shop as they arrived on scene. Let's take a look at some of the images that we were able to capture earlier. The fire broke out around 1230 this afternoon. Fire officials say the auto shop had anywhere between eight to 10 cars, along with tools and equipment. The fire managed to destroy most of the shop, according to fire officials. Back part of the structure is no good, collapsed. The only part that's going to be good is the front part that you see here. Tim, right now the cause of the fire is under investigation. The fire officials tell me that the, there's hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of damage. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Tim. Thank you, Jonathan. New at 530, we now know the name of a man who was found inside his vehicle with multiple gunshot wounds over on the east side on Friday. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identifying him as 60-year-old Davis Gilbert. That shooting happened Friday night at a home on Nelson Avenue. Police say they found more than 25 gunshots and believe the suspect might have used a high-powered rifle. Gilbert was pronounced dead at a hospital. His death ruled a homicide. Police now hoping security cameras in the area could help them lead to an arrest. Developing overnight, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working to identify a wrong way driver who police say crashed into another vehicle, sending three people to the hospital. That crash happened around 1230 this morning on I-37. San Antonio police say the wrong way driver hit the vehicle head on, then rolled over into the wall divider. Firefighters had to use the jaws of life to free that driver, but the driver was then pronounced dead at the scene. The vehicle that was hit had a couple and their teenage son inside. All three were taken to Bamsey in serious condition. Meanwhile, a scary scene for one moviegoer last night who was stabbed inside a movie theater. That's according to San Antonio police. That incident happened at the Santicos Palladium Theater off of I-10 just after 11 p.m. Police say that suspect came up behind the woman and stabbed her multiple times before running out the back door. She was taken to University Hospital in critical condition, but as of this morning when we checked, she was now listed in stable condition. Police are hoping security footage will help them identify a suspect. Suspect. Out of three incumbents hoping to keep their city council seats, only one was successful last night, and now four districts will have new leadership once they are sworn in. Let's take a look at the runoff election results from last night. In District 1, Mario Bravo got 54% of the vote, beating out incumbent Roberto Trevino, who had 46%. In District 2, newcomer Jalen McKee Rodriguez secured 63% compared to his former boss, incumbent Jada Andrew Sullivan, who had 37% of the votes. Over in District 9, we'll continue to see uh, representation by incumbent John Courage, who won for the third time with 54% of the votes last night, compared to his competitor, Patrick Von Dolan, who raked in 46%. And in District 3, Phyllis Viagran is taking over from her younger sister after getting 60% of the votes. Thomas Ureste, her challenger, secured just 40%. And finally, in District 5, they will now be represented by newcomer Terry Castillo, who got 58% of the vote last night, compared to her competitor, Rudy Lopez, who had 42%. To read about what plans each newly elected and re-elected candidate will focus on during their term on City Council, you can head over to our website at ksat.com slash vote. Volunteers are making sure the life of Marisol Klingelhofer isn't forgotten. She was reported missing last month when investigators then discovered she was brutally murdered. Today, volunteers hosting a plate sale in Somerset. Jaffney Gray spoke with organizers today about why they wanted to show their support. I'm here at the American Legion Post 443 where many people came out to pay their respects to Marisol Klingelhofer, purchasing plates and make a donation so that her children could give her a proper memorial service. Volunteers who knew the family say that they're honored to be able to help with the family during this tragic time. Klingelhofer was reported missing May 7th. Several witnesses led multiple law enforcement agencies to an Atascosa property, which led to 36-year-old Andres Tarnava. He confessed to killing Klingelhofer and now is in the Bear County Jail. 
Tonight on the Night Beat, you'll hear from those who participated in this plate sale to show the family that they have their support. That's tonight at 10. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Another tough weekend for tubers out there. You'll have to wait again to get some relaxation time on the Comal River because it was closed once again today. Similar to last weekend, the reason was due to heavy rainfall. New Braunfels police officials say the water clarity is bad and the river flow has increased to where it's unsafe for visitors. Officials will reevaluate the river conditions tomorrow and possibly reconsider reopening the river. Still ahead on the news at 530, the vice president is on her first foreign trip. A couple hiccups before it happened. How this is part of the overall plan to slow the surge of migrants crossing the border. Technical problems on Air Force Two led to a slight delay for Vice President Kamala Harris's first foreign trip. The plane forced to return to Joint Base Andrews shortly after takeoff today. Here's ABC's Ike Jochi with the details on what she plans to do in Guatemala and Mexico. Vice President Kamala Harris giving a thumbs up at Joint Base Andrews before switching planes. A technical issue during takeoff forcing her to turn around before continuing on her trip to Guatemala and Mexico. She's already met with the leaders of both nations virtually, but will now sit down face to face. It's going to be an, an honest and, and real conversation. So I do. I'm, I'm there to listen as much as I am to share um, perspective. Her mission to slow surging migration from the region now at levels not seen in decades. Gloria Amador is a nurse in Guatemala. She says many parents leave because they can't find work. The World Food Program estimating nearly 4 million Guatemalans now struggling with acute hunger and food insecurity. More than 46% of children under five have stunted growth. In April, the U.S. committed $310 million in immediate aid. The White House proposing nearly $4 billion over the next four years. A stark contrast from the Trump administration that halted nearly all aid to the area. The Biden administration has quietly tasked humanitarian groups with recommending which migrants should be allowed to seek asylum in the U.S. The administration is trying to address the challenge of lifting some of the more restrictive Trump administration policies, but also not encouraging another period of increased arrivals. This Honduran mother reunited with her 14 and 10 year old children. She says she sent them alone across the border in search for a better life, telling ABC she cried every day when they were apart, but she felt she had no choice. Like any other mom, just wants the best for her children. She had to make the hardest decision. I don't know that I could have made it. The kids had been placed with the foster family in Ohio last November after crossing the border illegally. Their mother stayed behind to wait on her asylum case. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington, D.C. Outside with live cam, a chance to dry off today. We've just got some fair weather clouds out there, uh, but it is very, very muggy. If you've spent any time outside today, you know that for sure, but a chance to dry off after a rainy stretch here lately. The aquifer is up almost a whole foot in the past 24 hours to 671.2. And because of the rain we had around yesterday, mold is still very high. In fact, it's up a little bit from where it was yesterday. Count of over 17,000 grass and pigweed are low. As we get the new work week started, our focus shifts from rain chances over to temperatures. It's going to be feeling more like early summer here uh, in the next several days. We'll talk more about that and get you ready for the week ahead coming up. Had a lot of rain and clouds lately, which has led to mm -hmm. cooler days, but boy, that went away quickly today. It is hot and muggy out there today. Yes, and that's going to be our trend heading into this week. Not so many rain changes. Uh, actually no rain chances in the forecast this work week, but more seasonable heat. It'll feel about like it should for this time of year in the week ahead. So here's your week at a glance. We're going to carry a really, really, really low chance of an early shower tomorrow morning. Other than that, rain free in the week ahead with high temperatures climbing into the low 90s over the next few days out there right now at the airport, a mix of sun and clouds. Skies kind of turned a little dark earlier this afternoon. That's because we had a little batch of some clouds moving in from the west. There was no rain 
and those clouds just kind of turn the sky a little dark for a couple of hours, but now those are on their way out and it's really quiet across our portion of Texas. A few more downpours up through East Texas, closer to the I-20 corridor, some storms in Oklahoma as well. There's that upper level low we've been talking about for the past few days. It is now spinning over portions of Oklahoma. That's where all the really good rain making energy is, and that's going to continue to move northeast over the next 24, 48 hours, taking rain chances with it. So if some storms can get going on the west side of the slow up in West Texas tonight, they could wander into central Texas through early tomorrow morning. If that happens, we could have a stray early morning shower. If anything does develop and move into central Texas, it will really be weakening as it gets closer to us. So I've got just about the lowest chance of rain possible heading into early tomorrow morning. After that, we'll drop rain chances heading into the rest of the week because that upper level low will continue to move away. That's going to allow a ridge of high pressure to build in over Texas. This is not the big heat high that pays us a visit in the middle of the summer. It's not quite that strong, but it will allow for plenty of sunshine in the week ahead and also a little boost in our temperature. So what I have for you here, this bottom line, the red line, that's our afternoon high. So we're looking at upper 80s, low 90s here in San Antonio. The pink line right above it, that's the heat index. So what it feels like when you factor in the humidity or how much moisture is in the air, the higher the humidity, the more of an effect it has on our heat index. And we'll be flirting with the 100 degree mark in terms of our heat indices as we get into the afternoon hours this week. But this is nothing too crazy. This is nothing we can't handle. In fact, this is pretty seasonable for this time of year. It's just been cooler than normal lately, so this may take a few days to get used to here. Out there currently, air temperatures in white, heat index is in yellow, so 86 at the airport feels like 93, 90 in Pleasanton feeling like 100, so we do have some heat indices in the triple digits this afternoon, and that's because our dew points are pretty elevated. For most of us, they're in the 70s. Beeville, that's a little high. There's an issue with your sensor there. You should be closer to the mid to upper 70s. Nonetheless, it's muggy out there, and as that humidity stays high in the week ahead, as our afternoon highs uh, hang in the upper 80s and low 90s, we'll continue to see some heat indices as we get into the afternoons this week. So uh, if you're spending time outdoors, if your work keeps you outdoors, just make sure you're staying cool and hydrated this week. You'll start to hear us say that more and more as we get into late spring and the official start of summer here later in the month. As for this evening, muggy, but we'll have a little breeze in place. Winds about 5 to 15 miles per hour, partly cloudy through 7 p.m. and then mostly clear skies. Temperatures slow to fall into the mid-70s. We'll start off warm and humid in the morning. Again, I'll keep an eye on any little thunder showers that could try to rumble into central Texas. We could get a leftover. Chances are, though, that won't happen. And we'll just start off gray in the morning, breaking through to sun and clouds in the afternoon. High temperature tomorrow, 88 in the evening, mostly clear, but still staying humid. You guessed it. Uh, and a much quieter forecast this week. Uh, temperatures again warmer than what we've been dealing with lately, but seasonable for this time of year. Stay cool out there. Has Mother Nature finally turned off the water? We'll for have now. To wait and see. <laughs> for now. Thank you, Katie. All right, NFL rule changes, Larry, allowing players to change their numbers in the offseason, one of them including a Cowboys player. Yeah, Cowboys linebacker Jalen Smith, when he entered the NFL, had to wear number 54 because number nine on the Cowboys was already taken, but it gets to be number nine now. We'll explain. Plus, Judson softball finished the season as state runner-up, and that's still awesome. Coming up. Despite a loss in the championship game, the Judson softball team still has a bright future ahead of them in big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys linebacker Jalen Smith has a new look at OTAs after switching from 54 to number 9. Back in April, the NFL approved a new rule which relaxes certain position groups wearing certain numbers on the field. Linebackers can wear numbers 1 through 59 and 90 to 99. So, after getting the green light from Jerry Jones and the former owner of number 9, Tony Romo, Smith is back in Jersey 9, which is a very special number for him. It's definitely a blessing. Uh, it's been a part of my life. Um, been wearing number nine since I was nine years old, uh, through Pee Wee, middle school, high school, college, um, All-American games, you name it. Um, and number nine is a part of me. So 
uh, it's really a, just a, a blessing to be able to, uh, to, to continue the legacy. The New Jersey rules will take effect in the 2022 season, but the NFL is allowing players to switch this season at a price. The player will have to buy out the existing allotment of jerseys featuring their current number. Smith is reportedly paying mid six figures to buy what's left of 54s in stock. With the future of quarterback Deshaun Watson up in the air, Tyrod Taylor, Jeff Driscoll and rookie Davis Mills are battling for QB1. If Watson doesn't play this season, many feel the 10 year veteran Taylor or Mills, the Texans first overall pick in the third round this year, will get the nod. Now Taylor met with media this week, the Houston media that is, and was asked how is Mills coming along? He's been doing a good job. Uh, of course, all three quarterbacks, myself, uh, Jeff Driscoll and Davis, uh, we're all learning the system for the first time. So I think each and every day um, guys are doing a good job of just keeping the communication open and pushing each other on the field. The Texans are scheduled to hold OTAs tomorrow and Tuesday and then again Thursday and Friday before mandatory minicamp starts June 15th. Last night, the Judson softball team ended their historic season one win short of securing the UIL Class 6A state title. The Rockets were deadlocked in a scoreless tie with Deer Park throughout the first five innings thanks to timely defensive plays from both teams. The Deer finally broke through in the top of the sixth with this RBI single from Rihanna Neiman. But Judson had a chance to answer in the bottom half of the inning with the bases loaded. But Deer Park pitcher Hannah Benavides comes up clutch, earning a strikeout and a flyout to end the threat. And that was the last best chance Judson and had the Rockets fall one nothing, but still have plenty to be proud of. It was a roller coaster of emotions, and I think it was more of a like a battle of who wants it more, and we really did want it more, but it just didn't come through at the end of the game. Things happen. We're, we didn't make it as far as we wanted to, but all, all we end up loved each other and our bond with each other was just special. More than anything, I'm proud. I'm just proud to see that they were so resilient and just um, finished the way that you want to finish a season. And number two in the, um, um, in the state, it's not a bad thing. And, and, and again, that won't define us. This journey defined us. The Rockets end the season with a 35-3 overall record. The UIL State Baseball Tournament begins next week, and two teams in the greater San Antonio area will make the trip up to Round Rock. That includes the Smithson Valley Rangers, who are making the program's first appearance at Dale Diamond since 2005. The matchups are officially released this afternoon. The Smithson Valley will face Rockwall Heath in the Class 6A semifinals Friday night at 7. And in Class 2A, Shiner will take on New Deal. First pitch for that semifinal scheduled for 4 p.m. on Wednesday. San Antonio FC picked up a road point in Colorado Springs last night after a 1-1 draw with the switchbacks. 88th minute, SAFC down 1-0. A free kick from Cam Lindley goes to Justin Dillon in the box, who fired a left-footed finish into the top corner to level the score. The goal marked Dillon's first for SAFC on his debut to help SAFC kick off a three-game road trip with its first road point this season. It's just the perfect way to come back. I think the team fought a lot in the game, and we definitely deserve something from it. So obviously being out six weeks, I couldn't have asked for anything more than to come on and help the team get a well-deserved point. Yeah, Justin came up big for us. You know, all the players that entered the game, you know, we thought, uh, you know, brought energy. We created some opportunities and, uh, you know, well-deserved one point. SAFC will travel to Las Vegas to take on the Lights FC Friday, June 11th in the first and only meeting between the two sides this season. Brooklyn Nets guard James Harden will miss game two of the Eastern Conference semifinals due to right hamstring tightness. Harden logged just 43 seconds in game one last night, grabbing his hammy after driving to the bucket. Brooklyn still won the game 115 to 107. Game two is tomorrow night in Brooklyn. We Clippers beat the Mavericks 126 to 111 in game seven of that first round series. The first home team to win a game in that series. And in the Eastern Conference semis, the Hawks beat the Sixers in Philly 128 to 124. Smithson Valley Rangers lineman Colton Thomason tweeted today that he got an offer from the University of Texas and he got a picture taken alongside head coach Steve Sarkeesian. Colton is 16 years old, six foot eight, 325 pounds in class of 2023. Last year in August, he got an offer from Michigan State. That is awesome. Congratulations to him. Good luck to him. Thank yep. you. We'll be right back. This looks a lot different than the forecast I was giving you for last week. Finally, a chance to dry off. Ridge of high pressure sneaks into Texas that cuts off the rain chances and brings our temperatures up to the low 90s, but our average high this time of year is 92. So we're not doing anything too crazy with the heat 
just yet. It will stay muggy though, so if your work keeps you outside, just make sure you're staying hydrated in the week ahead. It's Tim. crazy to me that it's warmer up north right now than it is down here. Thank True. you, Katie. That's all of our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tonight for the Night Beat at 10. Until then, have a great evening.